If you ask most people what their brain is made out of, they would say neurons, of course, the main cell of the nervous system. Neurons are responsible for quickly transmitting electrical impulses to all parts of our bodies, making our muscles contract and returning information about our environments to our brains. But did you know neurons are far outnumbered in your brain by another type of cell called glia? By the late 1800s, science had advanced enough to look closely at the cellular structure of the brain. Camillo Golgi, an Italian physician and soup strainer aficionado, discovered a now famous staining technique that made neurons visible under the microscope. We could now clearly see the cell body in the axon, the fiber that conducts electrical impulses over long distances. But Golgi's stain also revealed something else, cells that look like tiny spiders throughout the brain. They surrounded the larger cell bodies and axons of neurons. The cells were called glia, but what they did was a mystery. Neurons, in contrast, were quickly developing reputation as the fundamental unit of the nervous system. 100 years before, fellow pizza lover Luigi Galvani had demonstrated the link between electrical currents and muscle contraction. He took a dead frog and attached electrodes to its legs. When current flowed through the electrodes, the dead frog's legs twitched as if they'd come back to life. Now after the discovery of neurons, another piece of the puzzle had fallen into place. These cells must form the wires that transmit electrical signals in our bodies causing our muscles to contract. But what role did that leave for the glial cells? With Golgi's staining technique, we could see that glia were much smaller and clustered around neurons. They appeared to insulate neurons and provide structural support. In fact, that's how they got their name. Glia is Greek for glue, so glial cells were thought of as the sticky stuff that holds groups of neurons together. Nearly 90% of the cells in our brains are glia, the other 10% are neurons. This is partially what led to the myth that we only use 10% of our brains. For over 70 years, the neuron dominant view of brain function went unchallenged. But recent research indicates glia may be much more important than just glue. Neuroscientist Andrew Koo believes that glia are the root of all thought. He writes that as you move up the evolutionary ladder, the percentage of glia in brains increases with our definition of intelligence. The brain of a fruit fly is 20% glia, a mouse, 60%, a chimpanzee, 80%, and a human, 90%. This rather strongly suggests that glia are more than just glue. Recent research has found that glial cells play a number of critical roles at synapses, structures that let neurons communicate with each other. At the synapse, glia can either promote the transfer of a message or slow activity if the synapses are becoming overactive. Glia control this transfer of information in brain structures like the hippocampus, our memory center. So these tiny cells are affecting how we process information, learn, and memorize. More research has found that glia have stem cell potential. They can guide neural growth in the developing nervous system. They're kind of like parents. They nurture young neurons and step back as they grow up. But if the neurons get in trouble, they'll step in to help. If nerves get damaged, a type of glial cell called a Schwann cell can regress to an earlier developmental state to encourage regrowth of the axon. To do this, they form a type of tunnel that leads towards the target neurons. The stump of the damaged axon is able to sprout out of the tunnel and then can reconnect with the muscles or organs they previously controlled. Research into glia is pretty recent and neuroscientists still have questions about how glia fits into the mix. They could lead to nerve repair and even be the root of our thoughts. The answers to these questions all lie inside your head. I just wanted to pop in and say happy holidays. If you're looking for something to read over the break, this video was inspired by Andrew Koob's book, The Root of Thought, Unlocking Glia, the brain cell that will help us sharpen our wits, heal injury and treat brain disease. It's really interesting, and his name spelt backwards is book, which is a wonderful anadrome like snoops and spoons or straw and warts. There's a link in the description. And remember to subscribe to Braincraft for a new video every other week.